Alright, good evening, Star Wars CCG fans. Jared Napolitano, JNAP, uh, the marketing advocate for the Players Committee here. Um, this is Thursday, September 8th. We're going to do some more streams for the 2022 Retro League. Uh, this is event number four. I have, I actually got a total of eight uh, game streams from a couple different players. Um, we'll do four of those games in this session, and then I think next week we'll try to do another four. Um, I talked with Craig Atkins a.k.a. Fatty um, is his YouTube handle. Um, and we talked a couple times about trying to um, team up and doing some streams, and I think that hopefully will come together uh, next week. So that'll be another four. But um, I have four games here. Um, and quick background, this is there's five events in the Retro League for 2022. They're all on GEMP, uh, play.starwarsccg.org. It's a free league with some pretty cool prizes. Um, kind of going through time, uh, the first event was Premier to A New Hope. Second event was Premier to Hoth. Third was Premier to Death Star 2. So all Decipher era cards up to those expansions are legal. It's kind of like a time warp. Um, and this was the fourth event, which was Premier to Jabba's Palace Sealed Deck, which was around, I guess, uh, like October of 2000, maybe maybe November. I think it was actually previewed at 2000 Worlds, um, pretty famously won by Matt Sokol. Um, so that kind of changed the, the meta a bit. And uh, the fifth event, which is going to start in about, uh, I think about 10 days, is Premier to Reflections 2. Um, so this format, um, Premier to Death Star 2 is by far the most popular retro event. And this format, uh, retro format I should say, um, it's pretty similar. There's a couple changes which are neat. Um, I think some people, if they had their uh, wish, they, we would do two Premier to Death Star 2 events. Um, so this is a slight change. I think in some ways it's good that it's pretty similar to Premier to Death Star 2, and then yet with a couple uh, differentiating things. So up on the screen here, this is just the forum for the Retro Jump League. We've been getting between like 40 and like 55 players for each of the first four events, um, which is really great. Um, it's really neat seeing uh, players, well, some returning players, uh, some new players who are really playing for the first time, and then some like experienced, open, I'll call them veteran players who play all formats, including current standard like myself um, who are joining in and some people have played all four so far some people have played one some people have played two um, in this fifth event which registration is still open for if you if you haven't played any other events you can you're probably not going to win you're definitely not going to win the uh, the league um, which has cumulative standings but that's okay it's, it's good to have some fun games and these uh, as I uh, wind down kind of this pre uh, preamble for the stream um, these have been getting some pretty good viewership on our YouTube channel, and I think that it's encouraging that there's a lot of players, um, you know, maybe the passive players, old school players, who enjoy seeing these these uh, these matchups. And you know, a lot of times people come back to the game. Oh, what decks are played? I want to play this format. I don't know what decks are good. Um, what what are players who are doing well or or good players? What are they using? And um, what are some decks? Um, so I think these streams, you know. They're not always going to, they're not going to give you the exact deck, but you know I'm sure some of these players, if people ask, they'll they'll provide them, or some of them have even been posted in the forum. But at least you get an idea on what a lot of the good cards, good strategies, good themes, um, what what objectives are played. Um, and so if you're you're trying to play these games casually or or, or more locally, um, you have a, a baseline to work off of. All right, so with that um, going in here, I did uh, we've been doing these usually in like games five and six because. At that point, we don't really have to worry about giving away anyone's secrets with what decks they're playing, what hot tech they're using. Um, so once you play your game five, you're not going to play any more games with that deck in that event. Um, so I have tonight one game five from the event and three game sixes. Um, we're gonna one of them is uh, we have table six from game five, and then we have tables. Uh, Four, one, and two in that order uh, for game six. So we'll, uh, in game one and two, we're between a four and one and a five and a player. And uh, and one of the, one of the five and O's was me. The other was Brad Kipple. Um, and table four, um, we have Matt, Matt Manning versus Linden. And uh, and we'll start with Paul Atkins versus Edward Swabowski. Swabowski, I hope I'm saying that right. All right, so we'll jump right in here. Um, again, I, I ask kind of players, hey, if you have anything interesting or if you have a really good competitive game or anything pretty crazy happens i've uh been pleasantly surprised at some of the stuff that's happened in some of these um submissions in the first three events so i'm um, looking forward to some fun stuff happening um in this um i think some background here my anticipation here fat lenny is the uh 
the flagship operations uh, extraordinaire. I would not be surprised to see. It looks like, yeah, you can't start flops. Um, so that might come out again here with some TIE Assault Squadrons. There was some pretty wild stuff when I was, yep, here we go. We got the Asteroids, we got Counter Assault. So this should be a fun game as we see uh, his deck quickly with a, he uploads something. Um, and he's playing against N Rabbit, uh, Edward. Um, he's playing Throne Room. Looks like a pretty standard three card start Throne Room. Um, key thing to note there is that one of the big changes from Premier to Death Star 2 to Premier to Jabba's Palace Seal deck is Unita and No Escape, which killed the Throne Room nudge start with com or, uh, uh, careful planning where you would start the Swamp and the Farm and um, get some nudges out and, and deny your opponent force um, and, uh, and basically just react to them with mains. This docking bays, docking bay activation with staging areas at the top there. Uh, insight serves you well. I'm still got to be on the lookout for inserts uh, in these in these formats. So Guni Tay comes out, which is um, you know generally pretty good against Hunttown, which usually plays a lot of power characters and mains. Um, and we have all powered weapons tossed from hand by Fat Lenny and a sense also from hand from Edward. A sense and altar are usually not very effective um, versus Hunttown because it's adding four. Um, to all the draws. So um, we'll do a sticker book token as well. If you're familiar with that, I'll show anyone not aware where, where to go, what that is. Um, we'll do that, I think, halfway between um, the four games. All right, so this is kind of a neat card. Um, Star Destroyers, I think it makes them pay plus two force to move away. So um, if, if Light Side isn't aware of this card, they can get stuck and not have enough force to run away and get caught in a beat. Um, I think... I'm not familiar. I don't know if Adam uh, Fletcher's watching, but I think there was a couple bugs that might have been uncovered with this. Maybe Gurgle. Uh, Greg's in the Rules Advocate. I think these Star Destroyer launch bays always kind of create some headaches because, like, are they related to it? You know, the Star Destroyer. Uh, yeah, are they related to the Executor? Are they adjacent? Are they lost if the Executor is lost? Um, there's a couple different rules things that go in here, um, and I think some bug was figured out and fixed. Uh, if I'm not familiar, or if, if I'm remembering correctly, kind of some of the dialogue here. And I know, I think Fat Lenny said that this is like his pet deck. Um, so uh, it's very important that, you know, and I think sometimes rules change over time. That, um, and I think some, some old school players get very upset, and I probably would be too if, hey, you played the game in 2000, come back now, you hear about a rule change that happened in 2009. Um, for, for, I'm sure, logical reasons, but it's just different. So people usually get upset yeah four turns trying to figure out why i can't deploy flops bug was fixed in between my games okay yeah hey hey paul um all right so yeah so flagship operations that's fat lenny's uh, trademark effect like we saw as i mentioned in the last stream with premier to dust star 2 um, emperor's sword or shield one of the other was lost last turn i have you now tossed tunnel vision lost and then we see lots of ties a couple star stores a bunch of sites a lot of blue in this deck um, between the sites and the starships. Um, counter Salt Flagship Operations is, uh, I'll pause it here, pretty ridiculous once it gets going because your ties are Destiny plus two, which means your squadrons are Destiny plus six because they're three ties. That's another thing that always trips me up with, with rules is when when combo cards are one card, you know, like Owen and Brew Lars, are they two characters? Are they one character? Can they use cards that target characters that are alone? Um, you know, squadrons, are they three ships, are they one ship? You know, so there are some, like, there's a, a new virtual card that came out that's two Star Destroyers, and and, and Gurgle does a great job. I think a lot of this stuff is in Scomp like Access now, scomp.starwarsccg.org, and has a lot of these, like, frequently asked, commonly asked questions, like, kind of preempted. Um, so definitely want to give that a plug. Greg's been doing a great job putting more and more rules in there so you don't have to load up the 175-page rules document um, to get an answer in the glossary. Instead, you can go to... Um, the uh, the scomplic access and that helps a lot of stuff like that that you know I personally get tripped up on. So yeah, we see the verify as I pause here. We got two flagship executors, a couple tie, a bunch of tie salt squadrons, a bunch of sword and shield, a D lots and, and D lots can be pretty dangerous to choke basically anybody if he's drawing, you know, a Destiny Nine tie assault squadron. <laughs> so that that can get fun. I think we saw that, or we almost saw that I think last time, where uh, like Obi Wan was at risk of getting getting choked by. Uh, DVD lots. All right, so he draws up. We have no nouns on the table yet, just a bunch of locations. As Fat Lenny wraps up uh, his second turn, we have a grabber tossed from hand by N Rabbit. 
Um, another I have you now lost from hand, um, which is interesting. I, I mean, I think at some point he's probably planning to go down with D-Lots and take out like a Luke or an Obi. Um, but I guess, you know, there's some things you, you definitely don't want to lose or lose off the top. Um, all right, there goes Insight to fetch Honor of the Jedi, which kind of one of the big uh, pivot points in going from Death Star 2 to the Jabba's Palace Sealed deck, of course, is No Escape, which protects against Honor of the Jedi, which was a very powerful card when it came out. Um, so both cards have about, or both players have a pretty healthy hands, not, not too much, not too few cards in hand. Um, Signer Fleet Systems gets tossed from hand. It's already out on the table. It's not immune to Alter right now because he doesn't occupy Wakamui, but Hunt Down protects that um, somewhat, or a good amount, I should say, by adding four. Coward, we got a lot of effects on the dark side's side of the table here. Visage is going to ping at the end of his turn. All right, so we just finished turn three. So a little bit of like a slow play here. Um, we got a Verify of the light side deck. We see home one of Lieutenant Blount. Um, Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight comes out, goes for minus two or minus three to home one, I think it is. Um, that's generally the idea. Minus three, so he's only five. And then you Docking Bay trans him over to a Battleground Docking Bay. Um, Honor's going out, um, so I'm anticipating that Luke's going there, yep. Um, so we have a four strain threatened. <laughs> um, and we'll see what happens. Kessel, did I miss that? Was that lost off the top or off from hand? Looks like from hand. Okay, interesting. Um, all right, so another Emperor Sword goes to the Lost Pile. This is probably a setup turn, I imagine, for Fat Lenny here. Gets the Asteroid Field out um, to walk Hill Mui. No, he's just going to draw. Okay, all right, so he's got an EPP Vader. Um, Countersault's not ideal against Luke, and maybe this is what, what Fat Lenny was referring to, is that he was kind of caught in a bug here where... He couldn't actually deploy flagship operations. Um, bug was fixed in between my games on Jim. So yeah, I do have another um, game from Fat Lenny. We'll do that in the second, um, the second stream for this event. Like I said at the beginning, probably next week. All right. So now Light Side's not losing to Honor flagship executor tossed from hand because he has another one. He's got 18 cards in hand. He's now gonna lose atmospheric assault. Another verify for Light. Trying to figure out what is where, I suppose. The signal is going to go grab the grabber. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens here. So it looks like it's still still kind of in a setup phase here. Um, got a little hunt down throne room. Classic matchup throughout the history of Star Wars CCG, starting, I guess, in... Um, well, throne room all the way back, but... Um, well, maybe not necessarily. Throne room wasn't... I feel like Obi-Wan's hut was probably started more frequently. And, of course, Adam, our, our great technology advocate, did present some gem stats on, um, on like, uh, his premiere to A New Hope, like what was the most common starting location, common cards and decks, that type of thing. So, all right, so Flagship Executor comes out to the asteroid field. Control station deployed from hand. Launch bay deployed as a related site. So, yeah, so to deploy Flagship Operations, you need five Executor sites on table, and yeah, and I think the issue here is um, he only has four right now, or, or maybe he should have five, um, but he, but Jemp only thinks he has four, that type of thing. So yeah, so this makes sense why um, so now it looks like he reverted, puts a docking bay out, and maybe this is what he was kind of like, what's going on here? Signer, and maybe because it costs more than he was expecting it to. Um, there's the deploy. So this... Your ties deploy minus two here. So again, three ties deploy minus six, two, or minus six, so I guess it's three. Trees three, there's no aim high out. So this is a, <laughs> so Fat Lenny's just gonna retrieve a bunch of force here. So we're up to six force he just got back. So even though he's been losing to his own visage for a while, not a problem, it appears. Um, I should shrink myself down. Let me put myself over here, sorry. Um, you can see the rest of Fat Lenny's hand. All right, so then the two ties get out of the launch bay and go to um, the asteroid field with the executor. So yeah, I guess I guess kind of the idea is if they don't win, if they they go to Lost for asteroid destiny, he can get them back just by retrieving the retrieving engine with Signer Fleet Systems. Fun fact about this, and some players might not realize this: um, 
the flagship executor cannot hold vehicles. This came up, actually I was playing Gurgle, um, he was he, in person at the Coruscant Regionals, and he was like, I'm going to shuttle up Blizzard 2 to my flagship executor. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> you can't do that. It, it can't hold vehicles because they had to get this text on here about immune to attrition if target a flagship operation. So um, I think we still see that a lot in design where sometimes cards virtualize, it gets one benefit, but then it also has one drawback. Like, for example, combat response virtual, you can't play Talon role with that, but it also gives your ties sort of like hyperspeed, um, which uh, makes them a lot more viable and playable. Um, all right, so now Anne Rabbit is going to put Captain Han Solo onto Hoth. Luke gets a lightsaber. EPP Leia goes. Leia gets a lightsaber. So now he's going to line up a drain of three with Han just chilling there, but he'll contribute to staging areas. So to bump the activation, a lot of non battlegrounds on table, but there's actually only two Twixes? Interesting. A lot of one O's. Uh, I don't... All right, and then we're going to have loses or drains. Jedi Knight lost off the top. Asteroid Destiny's a one. Failed. Looks like these guys are all... Okay, fun fact with asteroids, if your opponent draws an asteroid, your ship okay, uh, is immediately lost no matter the armor. All right, so now Executor, you're not actually going into an asteroid field, and the Executor is actually fine. All right, so he lost the tie, but he just no-escapes it right back. And he'll get the engine going here with we'll deploy it right back out for free <laughs> to the launch bay. Hit retrieve three. And, uh, yeah, see, these these are kind of fun things about these retro... Oh, we got a barrier, so it's not moving. Maybe and Rabbit has a spy and is going to go attack this landed uh, uh, TIE squadron. Because um, nowadays, you know, open with shields, you know, aim high or secret plans are pretty much always out. Battle plan's always out. Um, this game, we have no battle plan. We have no secret plans. We have no aim high. Um, so it's it's different. There's there's pluses and minuses. Sometimes the game goes faster. Uh, sometimes the game goes slower <laughs> because of uh, no shields. Um, but it looks like he grabbed return to base. So now he can cancel this drain of three. Um, battle plan off the top. That's kind of big. That might be something that differentiates the late game. That'll come up in one of the other games that I, I stream um, in this stream. How important battle plan is. All right. So flagship executive. Is that the third? I oh, know he, he might have. I don't know if he's running three or four. Um, flagship executors, maybe even two. Okay, yeah, so here's the spy, Tycho, Obi-Wan uh, with lightsaber. First off, there's the Nisby. So I thought of this character <laughs> as I go on a quick tangent. Our, our friend Bill Biscus has been ranting about Zuckus and Mist Hunter about four straight days <laughs> in the jump lobby chat and uh, about how, how OP Zuckus is. But good old first officer, the Nisby, she, right? I think she's a she. Uh, her planet, yep. Um, she has a similar function. Of course, she's not as efficient as Zuckus, who's one card, because you need to put uh, the Nisby onto a Star Cruiser with another Mon Calamari pilot. So that's three cards at least. Um, so, so yeah, so that's a similar function. But uh, yeah, I would say I think uh, I think Desai played her in one of his decks in the retro event. We got a smoke screen here, going for a big blowout here. Uh, that Lenny does not have a Gick, it looks like. So he's going to take nine battle damage. Oof, that's a lot. Um, but he's got... And what's that? And the big... So Flagship Ops is not out. Your ties, your pure starships. But then what's the deal with the... Maybe someone can help me. So this can only replace other squadrons? I don't see a bunch of, like, single ties floating around. Does, does it just replace the other one? And then it's kind of like a recycling thing? No flops yet. Can't surprise assault, right? Because you're not getting the bonus. You can't choke. Squadron of six less forfeit. Okay. So yeah. So Fat Lenny, I think, got caught in an unfortunate circumstance with a bug, which I actually just had one about an hour ago in my OCS game, which was almost game breaking. Um, so I know that's frustrating sometimes, but you know, with all this, two things are certain. This is a very, very, very complex game. Um, that is kind of amazing that this got this far on Jump. And two, we have the Jump Slicers who are always working really hard to try to. Uh, code new cards and fix bugs and um, and do that. So sometimes you just have to be patient and just say, hey, appreciate what we have and know that it's it's not perfect. So so while the bugs can be very frustrating in the moment, um, you just got to make the best of the situation. All right, so that comes return to base. That'll cancel the drain. So that barrier was pretty huge. That, that left the assault squadron stuck there. I mean, I imagine typically um, the plan for Fat Lenny is to... Um, oh. 
So I just had to kill a little bug in my basement here. <laughs> um, all right, so we got some four strains. Visage still pinging. Or maybe not some four strains. We got through the Asteroid Destinies. Um, and let's see here. Losing some cards. In fact, Lenny's down to just single-digit life force. Coward cancels the train at the launch bay. Home one comes out. Uh-oh. <laughs> so that... What's the plan? That's going to help. There's no battle plan out. That's kind of a high risk to just for Fat Lenny to draw an asteroid, right? But I guess... Um, and Rabbit's up pretty good here. Probably just wants to co keep covering different locations. Um, and... Draw asteroid. Fallen portal. Wedge is drawn. Tie Assault Squadron goes lost. Oh, can, oh I'm sorry. I'm going to return to base and uh, dreaded Imperial Starfleet mixed up. Um, well, I'm not the only person that does that. But All right. We got a four for Asteroid Destiny. Succeeded. Plus one. Why was the weapon left? Plus one. You add one for Asteroid rules in effect. Maybe someone in the chat can help me out there. Why was weapon... It says Total Asteroid Destiny is a five... Or drew a four. Do you like add one for each sector you occupy or something? Interesting play. It'll like Lenny to play the launch bay or lights ahead to go to lose. Yeah. A ordered engage is really, really popular card in this format. Alright, so sword comes off the base. Alright, so he's trying to make a comeback here, given kind of a rough rough draw with the with the bug. He just got back another six force. So that's pretty good. Yeah, these counter salts. Would probably do some pretty good, even maybe without the flagship ops against uh, Thanispe and Telchu. But maybe and Rabbit kind of sniff this out. Maybe he won't actually try to drain there. These other locations are pretty safe um, from a you know significant counter assault hit. Um, but it looks like Fat Lenny now might be running out of ties. Draws an 8 for that. Oh, wow. Oh, wait a minute. So the Emperor's Sword is an 8 for Asteroid Destiny. So the ties are Destiny plus... But flop, oh, flops is out now. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. So yeah. So he he put home one out. I didn't really see much upside there. Oh, and now he can counter. Oh man, is he gonna make a comeback here? So he's drawn. Oh, this is wild. Eight. And five is thirteen against. Is this the one at the docking base? So yeah. He turns a drain of three into a loss of two. Of course, he lost a card, but still, that's. Oh, and honor reduces it. Oh, that's a bummer for Fat Lenny. Um, but he does have another one still floating around, so maybe he can do some tracking. Tycho moves. Now they're going to the meditation chamber. <laughs> I hope he doesn't plan on draining there. That could be a big liability if he tries to drain with just power four at the med chamber and get hit with a counter assault. Um, we got a revert here. Only battlegrounds on table. The asteroids. Yeah, asteroids plus one per asteroids. Okay. All right, add a commission. Going to place. I have you now out of play. You're not going to counter assault your own drain here. Draw. He's got to pick which ship. Okay, so yeah, one at a time. That's a zero. That's going to be safe. Figure out what's going next. Looks like that one's knocked off by the asteroid. And let's see how this. How this goes. Akbar one failed against the armor twelve of the executor. Return to base. Alright. Uh oh, another barrier. If for nothing else, just to cycle the card for N Rabbit. Does he have another spy to go attack? That that would be interesting. This came up last time, this atmospheric assault. This is a rare from Cloud City. Cloud City Adam Bassett. Or during a deploy phase to play one tie assault squadron for free. Nice. Okay, so that's a pretty cool card. When you're running, he's got two of them now. Wow, so yeah, no aim high is really hurting and rabbit because it's allowing Lenny to just cycle these and no battle plan, too. Uh, that's tough. Okay, we have a counter assault, draws a nine and an eight, 17, so that's gonna be six reduced by two for honor. So again, he turns the tide here, and if you're and rabbit, you're kind of thinking, Whoa, wait a minute, am I gonna lose this? Because <laughs> this is getting a little risky, but he's got the spy there, does not battle. Why does he battle? Maybe he doesn't want the tie to cycle? Yeah, interesting. All right, so uh, Lenny's now at 13 versus 15, so it's pretty close in terms of life force board state. Um, 
it seems to favor light side, but uh, we'll see. So zero drawn again. <laughs> More retrieval for the TIE Assault Squadron. Using the atmospheric assault. And so now the launch bay goes lost. Is that what just happened? Yeah, wow. Tycho Seltru goes lost. Oh my god. Fat Lenny's got squadrons for days here, and they all deploy super cheap to the launch bay over here against Lando. So I think this looks like Fat Lenny might be able to turn this around. So now he's got to toss some cards, make sure he has enough in the life force to, to work with. Uh, we got a revert. Sometimes reverts break the replays. Hopefully we don't have any of those happen. That's always a bummer. Um, all right, Obi-Wan moves. I guess this is just a drain of one. Asteroid Destiny is fine. That one is chipping away with these drains of one at the asteroid field. Can't draw against it. Look at all these TIE Assault Squad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this is, why, this is why I have aim high in my light deck in this format and actually okay, it might actually be a standard start um as we'll talk about with my game all right so we got more squadrons fat lenny's totally turned the ship around he now is up in life force looks like he's basically up in board state he has no problem battling there losing or no light side yeah dark side battle there and then just puts it right and turn to base and he just keeps cycling it so how does this work again with my question about here so a starship just lost may be placed here. Holds one starship at a time. So for purposes of this, it's a starship, but yet for purposes of deploying, it's three ties. <laughs> this is why this game's awesome. <laughs> who, who knows when when one thing is three things and when three things are one thing. Um, all right, so more asteroid fields are, uh, are asteroid destinies. No problem. That comes EPP Vader. He's going to draw seven, which is going to get rid of both Luke and Leia. Wait, why didn't he just lose Luke? Why didn't N Rabbit just Luke is forfeit nine, right? Also, I'm missing something. Forfeit seven attrition. He could have. Did he not? Oh, he didn't draw. I don't know what just happened. Oh, so we've got a revert. Oh, so light side. This happened in another game we did. We streamed before. Light side activated all their force on their turn, and then. Didn't have any force in the reserve deck, so left we're left vulnerable on Dark's turn. And now I think the revert, this is like the fifth one, might have just broken it. But maybe Fat Lenny could fill us in. This looks like Dark is going to win. Because um, they still got squadrons to cycle around, and they could just keep chipping away with these drains of one. Light has no means of retrieval. Um, and they just got rid of one of the lightsabers here. Um, Activate it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Static sounds are very loud. Sorry, everybody. Hopefully, is it a little better now? I think the AC just chilled out. Um, yeah, let me know if you can't, if audio is bad. But, um, yeah, so this this revert, this game's dying, but I'm guessing that Fat Lenny wins. Swap the next turn, Drew 9, Destiny, and then he can see it. Okay. All right, so very cool game. Very, um, definitely made a nice comeback there. Um, all right, good stuff. All right, so let's do the next game here. This we have... Idea Track, aka the uh, the creator of all of the Jedi format, and Mantron, who is a uh, board mat on YouTube. It's got a really, really, really good YouTube channel. Lots of content for collecting and playing, and for players of um, all experience levels, especially people who are new to the game, new to collecting for Star Wars CCG. So check that out um, on YouTube. Board mat um, looks like we got at the initial. Looks like EBO versus ISB. So I know Matt. Um, it's been saying that he's having a good time in the retro league. Um, having a good time. I think he's played. He's one of the one of the big shout outs to all the players playing in this retro league who play in all events are very timely with getting their games in, so the schedule keeps moving. Big shout out to those. And I know I'm, I mentioned. I think I mentioned this, but um, talking to Steve Sanders, who's been like the primary TD for the league, um, definitely want to get at least all those folks eligible for a couple extra prizes. Because um, they're like the backbone of the league, you know. Like I said, we have between 40 and like 55 players in each event. And I'm sure about 30 of those, maybe 25, 30 of those players are, you know, very um, diligent getting their games in. Um, or if they're not, they're communicating well with their opponents and with the tournament director. And they're active. They're playing in like all four events. So, of course, there's there's prizes just for playing. But also if you're a consistent, um, reliable player and, and 
making sure these events are, you know, good good population. It's never, <laughs> it's not ideal to have really small events because you end up playing the same people all the time. So these events, which are big and Swiss. Yeah, so this looks like an EBOX that Linden's playing. Linden is a, I would consider him still a NARP. I think he might consider himself still a NARP. Um, he went to his first in-person event in like 25 years at the Nabu Regionals. Um, but I know he's been getting more involved in Open, but he definitely came back as more of a Premier Death Star 2, Premier Reflections 2, probably some sealed um, formats. And, and like I said, he's like he's the godfather, innovator, initial idea at least, of uh, the All of the Jedi sealed format on Jump, which is a really good time. So a lot of players like that. A lot of really, really good players and a lot of new players. It's got a good mix. Sometimes your draws aren't good, um, but I, I've played against, like I played against Timo once in that, and his draws were really bad and he still beat me, so. <laughs> There's definitely still a big skill component. All right, so we still have to set up phase here. Zeb goes out. Um, looks like this is classic EBO. I don't think we're going to be seeing Outer Rim Scouts because we see Den of Thieves. Um, those Outer Rim Scouts were pretty sweet, very expensive back in the day because they just they work with scum. They work with uh, but by them being ISB agents, pilots, being cheap, drawing Battle Destiny, um, being retrievable with. Um, the objective once it flips, being able to cancel drains on Den of Thieves, being able to uh, be used with Abyssin Ornament to do the once per game retrieval. Yes, yeah, Linden's uh, volunteered on the proofing team as well. So yeah, big shout out to everyone and anyone who volunteers. Um, lots of different ways to do that. And if you're watching this, you're like, oh, I want to help out uh, StarWarsCCG.org slash volunteer. That'll help you kind of get initial steps who to contact and kind of evaluate you know, what, what things need help with and do any of them line up with things that I really like and or am very good at? All right, so EBO getting set up here. I could speed this up a little bit at the beginning as we're still in this setup phase. Definitely a lot longer setup phase in these older formats than nowadays where setup's a lot quicker. Um, and there's less randomness nowadays, um, so you don't get screwed by your draw quite as often. Um, sometimes that's a good thing, and that creates more unpredictability and allows... Uh, sometimes, you know, a, a less experienced player to beat a more experienced player, and I, I still think there's a good amount of that nowadays, but I think uh, back then you matchups and card choices and, and draw were a little more important, um, or a little more impactful, I should say. All right, so I have this. Hopefully people can see here. Maybe I'll move this over a little bit. You can see the effects. Um, all right, after this game, we'll do the sticker book token. So you have a bunch of rogue uh, speeder pilots with Hobby, Wedge, and Zev on the ground here. So EBO set up. Now we're getting X-Wings that are only one force each. Got to deploy four to be able to draw Battle Destiny. But now he's threatening a drain of four, whereas Darkseid only has a drain of one lined up. U3PO is invading the Echo Base. <laughs> um, so I don't know if that's going to have much benefit right there's no real drain threat some some decks would drain under the shield if you got you got to satisfy come here you be coward um we also need a way to add i think like jesum is that the guy's name japs palace i think he helps get sites out um i think, there, I think someone played i think it was david de stephanus who played a ancient watering hole which is an open format and basically like drained under the shield in, in ebo kind of have a few things come together to pull that off, um, but that was an interesting deck, and um, if anyone kind of likes quirky decks, that was one. All right, so Matt here loads up. He's got two Star Destroyers with a couple pilots each. Um, he's got Den of Thieves, presumably to block this drain at Kifex. I would really hope for his sake. Um, he has, like, an Outer Rim Scout, or he's going to be eating a Dragon of Four here. Pays three, yep, he's got the Outer Rim Scout. Looks like Light as Rebel Fleet, so they can cancel drains as well. Lando and Millennium Falcon in an EBO deck. I like it. Um, it's a card that works in profit. Looks like Light is going to be attacking. We got some X Wings. Deploy one, forfeit four, right? Um, Rebel Fleet comes. Right, no, is Rebel Fleet the canceller or like the back to tank? It's the canceller. Okay, so yeah, it's like Dread Imperial Starfleet. Does Light have a starship back to tank, like return to base? I'm not sure if it does. All right, we got organized attack that's going to add one to power of each X Wing. Make them immune to attrition. Draws a Battle Destiny of 4. This is what Death Squadron Star Destroyer is immune less than 4. He's going to lose something, but also he's got he's down a lot of power. Is uh, Mantron. Draws a 4. Everything's immune for light, so they're going to lose nothing. Wow. And Dark is going to lose both pilots and a couple 
in Overflow. Outroom Scout, Twi'lek. Um, docking and Repair Facilities, that's the one. <laughs> Sorry, Gurgle. Let me see. I wonder what's the issue there. I am in the same spot that I've been doing most of these streams, including participating in Holotheater Theater last night. Um, so yeah, do, do please let me know, guys, in the chat if you're if it's hard to hear, if you're getting occasional stuff, because yeah, sometimes it is just the individual person, but uh, uh, yeah, maybe it's just me like shuffling around the laptop. Um, all right, so Light is about to draw their Battle Destiny for Incom Corporation, which is pretty, uh, that makes the X-Wings ability too, kind of beefs them up, supercharges them, and a bunch of ships go to Lost Pile, Light has three X-Wings remain, runs away from Bosk in Houndstooth, Battle order here. Neither player has it satisfied. Um, and yeah, so so Light's going to have to figure something out to get through this drain because with ISB, they can cancel the drain. They can retrieve once they're flipped the outer uh, retrieve an agent. And they can kind of get an engine going where they can have a pretty reliable way to cancel one big drain each turn. Um, but now light's going to be spreading out, so that will work in their favor. And then, um, threatening drains of two, or I guess they're all they're all plus two EBO, so that's four, three, four. All wings report in is going to grab an X wing. Dark pays three to drain one. Boba Fett and Slave One comes out with an outer rim scout as a pilot, outer or a pi uh, not a pilot, a uh, passenger. And one goes to Bosk and Houndstooth as a passenger, since you can't hold pilots. Um, and we have one X Wing go to Lost Pile. Looks like Dark is fully immune. Oh, not fully immune. There was no doubt about Destiny drawn, because Income Corporation is not yet on the table. I just saw it drawn for Destiny. Um, so that would be helpful for Linden to find here. Uh, Life Force counts uh, light. Looks like they're up about five. Same cards in hand. Board state. Uh, he's going to do all wings report in to retrieve. Looks like he's going to get seven force back. There's no secret plans out. Um, something special plan for something special plan for them places it out of play. So that's good. But <laughs> there's usually at least two, sometimes three all wings. But that's only a once per game function, of course. Um, all right. So light is going to consolidate their X wings. And yeah, yeah, spend, oof, yeah, see, that's a plus two force for each movement. So those are some pretty expensive moves um, for light side. But, all right, so he's going to move everybody so that they're all at Hoth. Dark has drain of two and one lined up. Dark hasn't flipped yet, um, which would be really helpful to start getting some uh, retrieval going with their seven side. Light's going to cancel the drain of two with control. And the one he's just going to eat with the second copy of Rebel Fleet. All right, Captain Goddard, the anti-landing claw guy. Commander Merzik. And now Mantron flips his objective. Consolidates Executor with Bosk. And he's going to retrieve a card. All right, so he's he's stabilizing a little bit here. Um, assuming he can draw an Outer Rim Scout and has an Outer Rim Scout in that five-card hand. That will be pretty good for him. Um, because Light... These plucky X-Wings are a little too plucky right now. Um, that's a pretty loaded uh, executor currently. Um, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so he's going to keep running away. That's something special plan for them. It's pretty pretty helpful, especially in combination like Battle Order, trying to do some uh, force, you know, make, make things expensive, put it that way. Um, X-Wing goes and cancels the drain. <laughs> Lots of drain cancels in this game. Death Squadron Charge Destroyer comes out, organized attack, makes them fully immune. That's not good. No grabber for Dark here. That organized attack can get really pesky. Um, and there's the Income Corporation, which would probably be helpful for Idea Track. It would help him spread out a lot more. He just needs two X Wings to draw Battle Destiny. And I think they get a little power boost. Right, Dark moves this Death Squadron Charge Destroyer. And now Dark is looking to tussle. At, uh, at Kifex. All right, another X-Wing comes out. Air's Income Corporation, which is your second copy. Um, just holding that Luke, I guess maybe maybe good like late game. You can throw him at the North Ridge or at the Endor docking bay 
satisfy battle plan. Um, he's got more than double cards face down currently. So I'll speed this up. It looks like this is going to favor light side. Um, dark lo or light loses a few cards. Dark's going to have to go cover up a drain. Um, and uh, 17 to about 22, 26. All right, here comes Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, but he's looked like I just saw a four four on the re on the verify. So Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, isn't going to do against. I don't think he's going to do anything against Luke, but he battles anyway. That's not good. Um, so that that kind of didn't go good for. Wow, look at light is really wide in this game, on a lot of different locations. Dark's in a. Let's see here. So we're speeding. I'm going a little too fast here. Sorry. Let me slow this down. And see how this how this finishes up. Dark has no cards in hand here. During light's turn 10. Bunch of moves going on. Dark is kind of hamstrung with no cards in hand, only seven cards face down. And light is threatening, you know, drains all over the place. So with with Dark having three of their own systems out, that feeds into EBO. Pro tip, usually against EBO, you don't want to put your own systems out. They almost always just become liabilities. Um, I'll never forget when I played against Chris Goglin in the Gen PC final in 2020, and I deployed, like, I think Korlog or Fondor in my stunning move deck, and he was like, ooh, lovely systems. So <laughs> I'll never forget, ever since then, every time I'm playing EBL, I'm like, do I really want to put the system out? Because it's probably going to be <laughs> something that hurts me. Um, so just something to keep in mind. It's not always bad to hold them back, but it gives them more places to spread late in game um, like this, and that's that, that helps them. Um, all right, so we have a battle here. Dark is going down fighting. Um, everybody's immune, but Dark is down four in life force. He's got two force left, and then uh, Matt concedes. Okay, so that was a pretty good game. Um, you know, light kind of had the pieces come together in space, and then it just was going to get too wide. So um, let's do the sticker book token now. We'll do uh, the sticker book token will be something special planned for them. So let me type that in the chat. Something sticker book token. Something special plan for them. You want to send that card name in the body of an email to holotheater at starwarsccg.org, and you can get prizes. You get packs with shiny, foily uh, virtual cards, and you also get little mini sticker cards that go into like a sticker book. If anyone has kids, they're pretty, you know, like crafty. You peel them out, you put them in a book. There's a PDF you print out. It's like 20 pages long, and you can kind of, it's a collecting item. It's a pretty cool Star Wars ECG thing, and it uses a lot of like uh, full, full slip virtual card images. Um, here's the details on that. It's if you just go to forum.starwarsecg.org, click on general discussion, it's at the top of that um, top of that forum, uh, and this explains the whole thing. Um, but basically, you you watch streaming stuff. We say, hey, thanks for watching stuff, and we'll send you some prizes if you make a little bit of effort and just shoot a quick email. So you get these packs. They have all these little stickers, sticker cards, and then you also have these really cool foil slips that have stars and stuff. So if you're not familiar with the program, they're they're really cool. Um, people are collecting them and trying to get all of them, and there's 64 total options. Each pack comes with four slips, I believe, and then I think four stickers. I should know this, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, so sticker book token um, for this stream is something special planned for them. All right, so now we're going to go. We have two more games left. Um, these are tables. This is table one of game six, and the last game is table two, which is me of game six. Uh, this is Dylan versus B. Kipple. These are very, very active players in lots of different formats. They were actually both just nominated for a Holly Award for a versatile player. They play sealed, they play retro, they play open, they play Jawa format, which is somewhere to open, but um, takes the top off, um, all different types of stuff. So I think they're almost rivals in a, in a chance, and I apologize to them because late last year I said, hey, we should do like some type of rival series with you two guys and um, try to coordinate and do some streaming. It might be a little awkward just because they know each other and that, you know, if you know you're playing a certain player, it can get kind of wonky because you basically can build decks to customize to them. But there's some formats like sealed formats that make it a little harder to do that. So long story short, it didn't really come together, but I feel like they keep running into each other in other <laughs> in other places. So Timo was playing. He told me he just threw this court deck together. He never played it, um, at least before. Um, and so he's playing court. Brad, I think, has been pretty 
consistently playing throne room. I don't think he played in the first two retro events, but he played in the uh, the third one, which is Premier Death Star 2. He's played in this one. I think he finished second. He was one of my two losses. I lost to him and uh, Johnny Chu, and I finished 4-2 and two in the third one. And uh, I think he played throne room in that one. I, I lost to him. He was playing Rops. I was playing some deck that I thought was going to do well against Rops, <laughs> but it didn't. Um, so, yeah, so the same starting three effects we saw in the first game we streamed, right? Um and, uh, and Timo's playing Court with no bargain, oppressive enforcement, power of the hut. Honor of the Jedi comes out, so that's going to make sure that Light does not lose to the Court ping. Um, looks like decent hand here for Dark. Bad Feeling of Eyes, very good, helpful to have. He's got Scum, which is a card you, you know, back in the day you'd have to fish out. Sometimes people play four copies of Scum, sometimes you play two or three Twilight Advisors, um, but you can't start it, and the only way to really pull it was Twilight Advisor. Um, so, like, I played my kind of scum in my game five. I think I played two scums and two Twilight Advisors. Um, so we got Weapon Lab. We got some spicy stuff as we just saw. A quick look at Timo's reserve deck. Gets his docking bay out with the objective. Deploy scum and villainy. Uh, Dar so this is light. So yeah, this, there's two different routes with Throne Room. You either get the Twixes where you play a bunch of two O's. Um, so Timo's playing the Sail Barge. I feel like this is a little more common of a start in uh, MCOS, my kind of scum. But maybe maybe we have a court we have a court person in the chat, <laughs> King of Jokers. I wonder how often he's played like this Power of the Hut, Hut influence string. Um, no bargain like isn't played in open anymore. I'm not really sure why. Maybe because of um, that. Well, not there's a lot of good light side characters that are not rebels, so they don't get hit with that deploy bonus. A lot more than used to be, and then like Mara Jade would turn off No Bargain, for example, because she's an Imperial. So Hut Influence comes out, um, that's going to prevent, and that's a helpful card against like Hidden Base, so they can't cancel your drains at Tatooine locations where you have two aliens, two different uh, two different types of aliens. Um, so not a ton of activation here for either player. This kind of favors Timo, or gives him a little more time to set up, so he's, you know, given that throne room is more of like an aggro reactive deck. The longer it kind of takes to piece together its onslaught. Um, and Melos goes to the docking bay to turn on uh, a plus two activation bonus with staging areas. And then he bypasses the court ping. So light or dark tossed away search and destroy. I missed that. And it's going to get placed out of play now with added commission, which is Scott Lingrell, the lead advocate, one of his favorite cards. Um, it's helpful against decks like this that retrieve a lot. Um, you know, some people talk about how good it is against, like, Hunt Down, because, oh, you kill Vader and play out of commission, and then Vader can never come back the rest of the game, but <laughs> the amount of dialogue on that scenario versus how often it happens is, is very uh, disproportionate. All right, so Mighty Jabba comes out. Mara Jade, who's a spy. Oh, we got a couple interesting things here. So I was wondering if he was going to go Boelo to the AC to kind of back up Mighty Jabba, um, but Timo, who definitely a very, very aggressive player, um... I guess he figures B Kibble's only activating eight, and it's gonna be hard for him to get any type of main into the AC. Yeah, between the plus two from bad feeling and the plus two from bad feeling, or from a no bargain, <laughs> it's gonna make any really strong character have a hard, hard time getting in there. Scum is altered, successfully altered by um, by light side, so he's not gonna get the retrieval. Not that he had any cards in his reserve anyway. Um, but maybe if he did that a little before the battle, it would have taken away that deploy um, subtraction. Probably would have, it probably would have made the most sense to do at the beginning of the turn if he was going to do it, but... Wow, all right, so he draws a 6, and Timo draws a 0, so it's not a good start for Timo. Again, going into this game, Timo is 4-1. and one. Um, I was his one loss, and Brad was 5-0. and oh. Brad and I were both 5-0, and oh, but we both played as Dark in Game 5, so we couldn't play against each other in Game 6. Court's pretty rough right now. No um, why didn't he deploy it? I wonder if he... Um, did he alter during the battle phase? No, he did, he did before. Yeah, good question. Maybe maybe you didn't want to get that one altered too. All right, so Brad's gonna activate, play the signal, or to grab battle plan. So that will slow down Timo a little bit. He won't get a free drain of one in at the audience chamber, and he's gonna have his court ping reduced to zero because of honor. Yeah, yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> um, yeah, because oppressive enforcement sent the canceled scum to the use pile. Um, and yeah, and Search and Destroy was placed out of play. So, yeah, might as well hold on to it until, you know, maybe he finds a control or something. It only 
benefits him to hold on to it um, until he can maybe get some other cards to maybe protect it. I think Scum is immune to alter if you, what is it, occupy three Jabba's Palace sites. Um, and it comes out again. So it's not immune to alter. All right. Scum, or uh, the flip side of Carbon Chamber testing makes immune to alter. Um, all right, so we got Docking Bay out. Doesn't, does Jabba the Hut virtual make Scum immune to alter? No, I don't think he does. All right, so Dark is going to replenish here. Projective Telepathy, a nice card. And a Grabber and a U3PO, so that would be good to stifle any drain that Brad might try to set up. Like this one, <laughs> with Luke going out to uh, the Endor Docking Bay for, what was that, 7-4? So yeah, minus 3, but then plus 2. Another out of commission. And Timo's going to grab it. He does not want all of his cards going to Lost Pile and then not having anything to retrieve. So probably a good grab here. Um, the other interesting thing about this format, this card used to be able to initiate battle with Scum and First Strike, and then and it, it, it was eroded to say if your opponent, instead of it, it used to say like if a battle was just initiated, or, you know, you must, it was, it was, you couldn't do it, you could do it on your own battle, which was kind of broken, and I think it wasn't really figured out until like 2003 maybe, 2002, after the Cypher stopped. So I think some people, again, who played in like 2000, didn't play at all, went to like basically like the Austin Powers time warp and or time or uh, frozen and then started playing Star Wars CCG again like this year would be like, wait, what's going on here? Why can't I cancel my own battles with projective? Um, so just the way that Jump works, obviously, it would be really difficult to have this errata be effective in some formats and some not. Um, you probably have to make like a different card, but then that can get wonky. I'm sure there's lots of uh, unintended consequences with that. So, um, that card was changed, so he's now gonna <laughs> not play it. Um, and Brad's going to pay the three to drain for one. Now he's got the lightsaber. Um, yeah, probably more effective for Timo to hold it um, when Brad really wants to get it through because now Brad's probably going to be like, yeah, sure, I'll pay the extra two. I'll pay five force to drain for two. And that might prevent him from doing anything else on a certain turn. So I've, I've actually burned Timo a couple times with projective. I, I really like that card. But you want to, you don't want to just play it their first opportunity. You definitely want to play projective when it can really like be a game changer. Like when your opponent's trying to get a big battle in and they don't save enough force and then they can't get the battle and then you get kind of like a uh, get out of jail free card. Oh, is that it? Yeah, special edition Java. that's right. Who I, I really like in my kind of scum um, to just make all your non-uniques a lot cheaper. All right, so Bib Fortuna comes from reserve deck using Power of the Hut. Um, deploy minus one because of scum. U3PO comes out. Um, looks like there's no... Uh, he doesn't have, like, O switch off or something to protect him from. Sorry about the mess. Uh, Undercover Spies, in playing these retro formats, there are a lot less options to get rid of them. I think over time people have become very, very, very frustrated with Undercover Spies, and there's lots of ways to counter them, but there isn't any, like, really hard counter or big-time silver bullet to get them, which is good and bad. Um, they're, they can be really, really annoying. Um, but, uh... I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we got a revolution in there, a wedge, red squadron leader. Technically possible. It would take a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, and I think it was eroded for a reason too, like projective telepathy. I think even if hypothetically decipher was still printing cards, two thousand two, two thousand three, they probably would have figured out. Hey, this is kind of broken. They did have a couple erratas. Um, they never they never banned cards. Um, but now ooh, Luke's going to the course on docking bay to outrun U3PO because, yeah, it would be pretty expensive. Can you... Uh, that's another rules question. Can you move an undercard for... You can, right? They can make a regular move. They can use Docking Bay Transit um, on the opponent's turn to move, but I guess he only he only had one saved, I'm guessing, and he needed the two. Um, all right, so Efunt Mon comes out. So Timo is bulking up the audience chamber. And ability, ability, ability. Nice. And he's got Prophetess. It just has like the worst stats. <laughs> deploy three, forfeit two, power one. Um, gives me an opportunity to plug the Greg Shaw episode of the Kessling Run. So look for the Kessling Run on. Um, all right, so now he plays it. Oh, it gets sense, but of course he's got oppressive. But um, probably gonna get this drain through for only three force and not five. Um, but yeah, Greg Shaw was on. He was talking about Prophetess and a really funny uh, story against playing against Johnny Chu at the, I guess two thousand two or two thousand three. Um, I think it was maybe 2002 world championships top eight um so check that out kessling k-e-s-s-i-l-n-g 
really good podcast series. I think he's got four out so far. Um, so those are very entertaining and very good about Star Wars CCG and history. And um, But yeah, there was a Virtual Prophetess that was a really good card um, in the very early PC era. All right, so Tals Ka, EPP Obi. Now Timo, Docking Bay Transit. Okay, so this time he does have enough force, right? Yeah, so he did. Wow, that was a quick turn. Um, sometimes these turns go really quick in these older, older formats. <clears throat> All right, so we have Dengar with gun, non-virtual, who's just like the play five, four foot three, can only fire once. Oh, maybe never mind. Maybe fire twice for battle. Um, it's like he got virtualized to be strictly better. Hashtag strictly better, because his forfeit is he's now four four instead of five three. He adds a battle destiny versus watcher step. Um, and we have Josh Purr, IG-8 Riot Gun. All these aliens are immune less than six because of... Oh, sorry, I paused it. So he's going to get the Prophetess. Um, Power of the Hut. Aliens aboard Jabba Cell Barge are immune less than six. So, But of course, Light Side can swing at or shoot at anybody on the barge because it's not enclosed. Dark predicts the winner to be himself with his three battle destiny. Retrieves a Gick and Zuckus for Scum. Um, again, this was table one, so uh, I think if Brad won this, he probably would clinch, regardless of what I did, because I think his strength schedule is a little stronger than mine. Um, but we'll find out. I think Steve Sanders is going to be posting. I think there are a couple straggler games finishing up, and we'll get the official results. Oh, yeah, it looks like they just came through. Um, yeah, so... I don't see the SOS on this, but yeah, we have 44 people play. Uh, it looks like through the entire event. Um, so yeah, great turnout. We'll talk about that at the end here. So Taz gets hit by Dengar. Got it disarmed. Um, weapon Destiny. Wow, so Obi... Hold on, so did Obi fire yet? Yeah, three and one and missed IG-88. Wow, okay. So this is not looking like a good battle for Brad here. And he draws a one for Battle Destiny. And he concedes. Okay, so yeah, 31 to 11. Taws has got zero forfeit, right? Dengar makes him forfeit zero. Um, so it looks like he's got a one, so 12. He's down 19. He's got to peel 11 unless he has a Hujix. And as I talked about on one of the other um, streams I did, Hujixes were not as popular because they're not pullable um, the way that Gick was because of a masterful move. So um, so Timo won, then he went on vacation, and he's prepping for the Euros, um, but he's going to finish 5-1. and one. It looks like for the standings, yeah, he finished behind Brad. It looks like Fat Lanny got third at 5-1, and one, and Brad was second with being the strongest of six 5-1 and one finishers. All right, so fourth and final game, this is me. This is versus my teammate, Ryan Jellison. Um... So this, I think we played Sunday night, maybe. What's today? Wednesday? Um, so yeah, Ryan's been very helpful in doing these streams. He always provides his, his replays, and I've been using them a bunch. So I think he knows that I know that he's played ISB a lot. <laughs> so, you know, we didn't really talk about anything. We didn't We figure, let's just play straight up. You know, I'm not going to, like, uh, you know, we're not going to agree to play certain decks or whatever. Let's just play our best decks. But at the same time, I'm sure he, you know, has an idea of some decks that I like, and I he 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 definitely zagged off of ISB, and I made sure that this profit deck had plenty of anti ISB tech. I was not going to get burned by ISB with this. Um, so when I see him flip over hunt down, which I never like seeing against profit, no matter the era, I'm like, oh crap, he's going to win. Um, and uh, and yeah, so I fortunately had a decent hand here with, and I put lower corridor in here because it's a good like stopgap or what do you call it, like escape hatch if. If just stuff isn't coming together on Tatooine, that at least I can get some type of damage through as light side. As you saw at the beginning there, I, I didn't even start a third effect, even though I could. I had, like, ultimatum, um, which against this hunt down, I figure out oh, it's going to be really hard for me to be on three battlegrounds. I don't think he's playing numbers. I think I'd rather just have that force in my in my deck um, than, than have it on the table the whole game and not actually do anything. Um, and I think... I'm not sure what the other one... Uh, and, and Unita, I think, was the other one that might have, and I think Drawler Fire, I'm not going to start Drawler Fire, but uh, Unita was the other, which I didn't want to start, because again, that's better to kind of use strategically during the game. So he has Dr. E and Mara, 
and but by hand is good, but it's not good in terms of activation. So that's where this is going to be a little bit of a problem. Um, and he's getting he's got secret plans out. <clears throat> this is why Han V in open format is so good because he makes uh, profit immune to secret plans. So you flip, you never have to pay for secret plans because that's such a drawback, um, especially against a deck like Hunt Down, which you're you're trying to juggle so many things of. Do I have enough fighting cards? Um, and then to have like 10 force. I think this might have been a game which made it, it would have made sense to start EPP Han and just go for the 5 in retrospect um, rather than play Premier Han, which I did. So I, in this this turn, I figure, hey, I got 5 force in my force pile. I got a tunnel vision. I kind of have to just take a gamble and hope that there's a Twix in my force pile. Hope that I pull one. Hope that I get my activation up. Um, but of course, I whiffed. There was really nothing good in that force pile. Um, I do have R2 in here, and uh, figure I could put him down, get a gift out. You know, maybe that comes in handy. I didn't want to walk into, like, a sniper. I also put a gift in because I thought that Ryan might have played, like, a, a Court or, or a Black Sun. or she, Like, some of those decks, a gift can just go a long way. Um, probably, what am I thinking? Oh, against, like, Outer Rim Scouts, too. If he was playing ISB, a gift would have been really good. Um, all right, so he loses Commander Marijek, which I think is really big. And I'm tossing cards in hand because I'm like I can't lose critical cards here. Um, and I figured Leia's not the best in Hunt Down because she can't do anything on her own until I get Luke and Obi out. She can't battle. She can't drain anywhere. So him losing Marijek in retrospect is pretty big because that's his engine to get uh, systems out. He would command for Piet. Piet pulls Marijek. Marijek to Docking Bay. Marijek gets some systems out. So he top decks Marijek. He's now loading up on the AC, which isn't the worst thing in the world because he, he's not draining me. But then, yeah, okay, so this turn eventually he moves out, but not quite yet. I didn't want to move R2 over until I had some type of protection, maybe like a... Uh, does, it's, a tra it's a trap cancel sniper. I don't know if I have it in the deck, though. I wonder what my thinking was on <laughs> when I was going to move R2 over. Um, maybe I was hoping he would kind of move out and I could move in um, and get away from a weapon. But so I pull a gift. I think I see that basically all my like Twixes are in my reserve. Um, so I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna put Obi here and hope. I was happy that he committed Vader to Tatooine. That he has rest order out, so he can't Ellis Hellrod him over here. Um, and I figure, let me just get Obi and start setting up a drain of three at the expense of my activation is just terrible. I'm not gonna draw any cards this turn, or maybe I do draw one. But um, but I figure, all right, if I get drains of three through, and we're both losing to Visage. Maybe that's a, one of my paths to victory here. Um, but this was one of those games where, like, three different times I thought I should just concede I'm not going to win. Um, so he loses Zuckus from hand, I think that was, right? Yeah, Zuckus from hand. I lose Ben Kenobi off the top. So we're starting to go towards this trend of, like, is he going to give up on space? Should I give up on space? Because I think I tossed the landing claw, right? Um, which is a tough decision. Uh, so he gets Cloud City, Beast Platform out, Battle Order, which I did not want to see. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, maybe, again, maybe his space plan's completely falling apart um, by losing Marijek, and then R2 gets trampled. So putting R2 out was basically a waste. Like, um, I could have moved him over and just taken a gamble, but I wasn't, like, reducing any drains because his aliens are all out of sight. He can't drain out anyway, and uh, I was kind of figuring, am, am I really going to battle the AC here? This looks like it's going to be kind of difficult to pull off. All right, so then he moves out, which is bad for me that he's now threatening a drain of three at my location. Harkseff is in here basically for that reason, to try to make this Jabba's Palace not as much of a liability as it can often be in any type of profit um, in any format. Um, and then we're just going to keep eating Visage Drain. So this game actually felt like it was like lightning fast, but I think it was like 40 minutes, but it felt like it was like 20 Um all right, so I'm, he's now activating out-activating me 15 to 7, which is just brutal. But I'm just going to just try to cram these uh, drains of 3 through to try to play catch-up here. But now he's going to have 3 over at the Jabba's Palace. Um, so I really need to find some sites, find some solutions here. Like, like it could be worse to be helpful. Um, and I finally draw a Twix with Rendezvous Point. I draw a Lando. And I draw a Control, which is really helpful, again, just to buy me time. And now I have... Both of Luke's possible lightsabers here, thinking, oh, all right, maybe I can go to this east platform. Um, 
and I, I'm making some tough decisions to lose off the top here at Rebel Barrier. He's going to get this shocking revelation cycle going with secret plans, um, so you can track five if he needs to, or just verify what's in his reserve, uh, or see what's in his reserve without giving me a verify, I should say. Um, so I cancel this drain, and now he's going to go here with Emperor, and I think transfers Ozzel over. Um, but I'm like thinking of this, I'm like, wow, he doesn't have that many cards face down. We have the same amount of cards in hand. And I have like, what, over 10, 12 more cards face down than he does. I have barely anything on the table. <laughs> this is why my activation sucks. He's out activating me by 10. And maybe that's part of the reasons he's got, what, one, two, three, four. He's got five locations out and I have three. And he's got a bunch of characters, a lot more nouns out on the table. I have two, basically. Um, he's got four effects, I have two. So it, it's kind of like a hidden thing sometimes where you're like, you know, hand sizes are pretty equal, but cards on table, um, yeah, that's where some decks like EBO, Echo Base Operations, is one that seems like one of the most egregious ones where you just have to put so many cards out. Ender Operations is like that for Dark. Um, all right, so he tosses his Shock and Revelation, loses I Have You Now, Lieutenant Cabell. I'm really happy that I have some more Force, and I put down Hark, who can make this drain at the East Platform nothing. Again, I'm still now starting to think, like, I mean, if he can never get Battle Order, if he never finds a system... Like, I'm definitely on track to win this with my damage of 3 to 3, basically. We're both eating drains to Visage. That battle order is going to start squeezing him sooner than it's going to start squeezing me. Who's beggar off the top here? Um, and he's going to play command to get Piet. Let's see what he does with Piet. Activates it all. I'm kind of happy that, all right, cool, he's not going to challenge my drain to 3 here. Every turn that I get that through, I'm feeling very happy. Um, yeah, I think I think I have R3PO in here, uh, Chris. Again, for ISB. Um, and I think I saw someone in the chat mention the thing about... I forget who did it. It was either Dr. Torch or maybe Teacher. Someone was basically... Had a R3PO undercover and was pinging... Was moving him to follow the dark side player. And because undercover spies, are, game text is active, and I know this because I know BB-8, if he has a gift, and he's at the same site as, like, General Leia Organa, for example, he pings. So, like, another one of those complicated rules things about undercover spies, are they inactive? Are they, <laughs> does their game text work? Can they be targeted by this? Can they be tar targeted by that? Like, there's, um, there's some things that are not super intuitive um, with the rules, and, um, yeah. So Underworld Contacts is a card I definitely wanted to make sure that it gets ISB so you couldn't reduce my drains. Lose that Ultimatum, lose that Han, uh, lose Alter from Reserve. This just keeps, keeps trending towards it's becoming less and less likely that I'm ever going to free Han in this game. But I think after this turn, I think I think I draw a few cards that make me then think, oh, maybe I can pull this off. Um, Yeah, and actually, there's like no, there's very few ways to break cover. Um, like Corn Horn is not out yet. Quite a mercenary V is obviously not in this format. Um, Elor's Madoc V, or Pilot Instructor, he is not you know available here. So there's just not a lot of ways to break cover. Um, like Dark has Hut Smooch, which does it, but Light, you kind of have to like just kill him with like Sorry about the mess, <laughs> or like Double Agent. Which I think I put in here again, just for that would be helpful. There's my R3PO. There's draw their fire, and I draw Leia and someone who loves you. So now I'm just like I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen. My hand, it might be yeah. Well, it's not my hand. It's not my face, but that's Leia with blaster rifle in the bottom right. So now I'm like, ooh, maybe I can free Han. But like to what end? I'm not gonna like really overflow Mara and Avazin probably, and it might just be a suicide mission because pretty much anybody's gonna get hit and operated on. But it now presents me with some more decisions of what exactly am I doing the rest of this game? Um, he loses Tarkin from hand for Visage. I lose Chewbacca from reserve. And I'm trying to balance this. I need force to pay for drains. I need force to do stuff with, to possibly draw destinies, to use. But I also like all these cards in my hand. So I'm like agonizing over every card I'm losing. I think he was you know, probably like 10 more minutes than me on his clock. Um, I was playing kind of slow. Losing it could be worse. Because it's just a very fragile matchup. Um, and now this is really bad, because now he's got Chimera. And I see Chimera, I'm like, oh, I can go attack it. But then <laughs> we're at attack position now, so that means his Admirals are deploy minus two. And this thing is immune less than... Less than seven, right? Less than five with an... Oh, no, Chiriot is not a leader. So it's immune less than six. 
which is bad because I have like maybe one six in the deck. Um, so now I'm starting to give up on the gift plan because he doesn't have any aliens out. Um, and I'm not, unless I'm really going to make a concerted effort to attack the AC, have those battle destinies being minus two work in my favor. The, the plan just doesn't make sense. I also kind of debate about putting R3PO in front of Mara and pinging for one, but I think he might just shuffle Vader and Mara at that point. So that'd be kind of a waste. So get, again, keep pounding these strains with three through. My reserve deck, my destinies are really bad. I think I went a four, two, and a couple ones and a zero. So that's not good. Um, but I think I just say YOLO. Um, come down with Luke. Hope I can just hit Ozil and then, like, be immune and overpower Emperor. Draw their fire, so I know he has no tricks, so he can't play, like, I have you now. Um, and try to win this site and hopefully get another drain of two. And if I can pay six, get five damage through, even though I'm paying and he's not, I feel like that would be enough with Visage pinging. Because I just have... Again, I'm like 26, he's at 11. I have more than double hand and life left. Um, so I didn't need to... But I, I can't afford to eat, you know, three from Kashyyyk, three from Jabba's Palace, and only be putting back three in damage. So this works out well. I hit Ozzel. Um, he's only got a couple cards in hand, so I, I figure he only has so many tricks he can punch me back with. He needs to draw a 7 to crack my immunity. Um, and I draw a 1, which of course Emperor is immune to. And I'm figuring here I'm probably going to have to peel a couple for uh, for battle damage, which I do. Looks like it's going to be 2. Um, in case you're just tuning in, the sticker book token was something special planned for them. Uh, if you want to kind of get some prizes. But this is the fourth of four games we're going to be doing tonight. What am I at here? We're at an hour 13. Okay. Um, all right, so he plays command just to cycle a card. Again, this is game six of a six-game event. Table two, I'm 5-0 and oh at this point, and Ryan, uh, Sac, 8 9 is 4-1. and one. Uh, So he loses Emperor off the top. I lose that zero off the top. And this turn's going to hurt because he's hit me for six free damage. And... Um, again, agonizing over each card that I'm losing. Master Luke, Sense, Lando off the top. I think I know I have like a four coming up here. Yeah, and I would have liked to have that to possibly hit Emperor. And I'm like a four four, kind of a bummer because I figure oh, maybe I can hit Emperor. He attacks me here. Now he, he kind of said, oh, I should have activated one less to be able to draw three Battle Destiny because he's going to play I Have You Now here. But it would not have made a difference. Um, I wouldn't have had any overflow, as we'll see. And this was, I got really fortunate here. Um, I think there were two things in this game that really went in my favor, or, or that, that were tipping points. Me hitting Emperor here was huge, because it's very, very, very possible. And like, Destiny's in this error are just so bad. <laughs> There's so many ones and zeros floating around. This was huge that I drew 3-5. Um, hit Emperor, so now he's got zero cards in hand. Emperor's definitely going to die. I'm not going to take any overflow here. He needs to draw, like, even if he drew, like, 15... I need to draw zero for him to put any overflow on me. Um, or no, maybe like a two. Whatever it is, it'd be very, very unlikely. Um, if you got the third destiny, I'd, I'd get any overflow. And then he draws 4-4, four, four, so I'm not immune. And obviously I'm not going to cause any overflow to him. I draw a three. Although, it, actually, his blunder could have possibly led him to overflow. If I draw like a five, he would have had to eat one. So, But that's not what happened, so... And, and that, since it actually worked out for him, because now he has an extra card to like draw or do something with or move, um, rather than draw Destiny, that would not have changed anything. Um, so now I'm thinking, doing the math here, I, you know, I figure I'll just keep tossing cards from hand so I can just have enough force to get through. Oh, you know what I think the other thing, the other big decision I made was, was I just held on to Melos until the last minute, and I think he was instrumental at the end. Um... So yes, yeah, so I have now, what, 15 life left? And he's doing six a turn, plus two a, two a cycle for Visage. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry, Joker King, I just realized. There was that one time when I, yeah, put a gift on U3PO against you. <laughs> Stole him, that's right, that was a fun time. Um, all right, so yeah, so... 
I get this drain of three through at the lower quarter as I have. Draw a few more cards, figuring out how to lose a bunch. I'd rather you know, get them into my hand, but trying to balance what I need to do. <laughs> Way too late for that 2 0 to help me at all. He's got basically now like one turn left. So I'm going to drain him for three. He's going to eat one to Visage on his turn here, and then at the end of my turn. So he's basically like, now I'm going to lose unless I do something. Um, so again, the R3PO plan is, is gone. Luke, I'm not going to have enough force to get him out. Um, Leia's gone. And here comes another drain of three. The Baragwin stuff isn't really going to work, I don't think. So I think I tossed the Baragwin. Lando can't contest anything in space and not cheap. Um, and I lose some reserve here. And he comes down with Janus now to block my drain of three, which is pretty big because that's like the best thing I have going. It is definitely the best thing I have going for me. Um, so I do have draw the fire on my side. Now the math is like if we don't battle at all, he's going to hit me for I have two, like basically one turn left because I have eight. I get ping with visage on this turn. I'm going to eat six damage and then I'm going to eat his visage on his turn. So like I'm dead unless I do something with this battle here. So and it's very possible that. I miss Janus because ability four again. My destiny sucks, um, and he draws high, and he doesn't take any overflow, and then I'm just going to lose. So that's where having Melos still in my hand, having him only to deploy three. I think I was trying to decide me losing Leia versus Melos, but Melos being only three deploy enabled me now to deploy Melos battle, and I verify. So this is where I make a decision. I have a five and three. It's more valuable for me to hit and make Janus's forfeit zero then possibly, you know, he's forfeit five. So basically, best case scenario, I draw five versus I get rid of his forfeit. But the way this works out, um, I'd rather get rid of his forfeit. But Melas now gives me a couple extra power um, to help with an overflow here. He's got no force in hand, no force in force pile, so he doesn't have a gick. Um, and it's very likely he's going to take overflow here. Like, very, very likely. Um, especially now that we're, we've confirmed that I'm going to hit him and make his forfeit zero. Um, so we get to the end here, we will speed up. Um, so I think he draws a six. I think I, I don't draw anything because I don't have enough uh, cards in my life force to swing and draw. I'm so sorry, I made the decision to swing instead. Um, and I think he maybe he concedes right here. I think he draws a six though, yeah. So he draws a six, so he's eight, so he's gotta eat three overflow and he's only got two force left. Plus he would have had to take one for Visage, so. Um, really close nail biting. In the moment, like I said, it felt like it was going really fast. I felt like I was agonizing over every decision. But I uh, I fortunately pulled it out and finished 6-0 and and won the event um, as the only 6-0, and um, which is pretty cool. So um, this is a game. Very, very happy with how this went because I feel like I was uh, not favored to win um, uh, given the matchup <clears throat> and given that I had just no activation all game, basically. But, yeah, so we're winding down here. Um, those are the four games, like I said, at the beginning, we'll do, I'll do another stream hopefully next week uh, with the co-commentator. We'll go through the four other games that I have. Um, just a quick reminder, too, the Premier Reflections 2 event starts on the 18th of September. Sign up is through 16th. We have 45 people signed up, most of which have played in other events, um, but some some are doing their first, I think there's five people who are, this is going to be their one and only event for the 2022 Retro League, which is cool. Um, all are welcome. This was the format that was done 11 months ago at Worlds. We did it in person. I think there was 15 people that participated on the Friday afternoon ahead of the uh, 26 World Championship in Washington D.C. Um, so check this link out. I would, if you're just looking to get to it, and you're unfamiliar, just go to forum.starwarscg.org. Do a Control F for Retro. It's down in the uh, uh, alternate format section, I think, and then this stuff will all pop up. This whole forum for Retro Gap League. Um, all right, so. One more time, there's something special planned for them is the sticker book token. Uh, I'll get this uploaded to the YouTube channel. Uh, thanks to everyone who tuned in and contributed to the chat. Uh, appreciate it. Helps the helps the action go a little quicker and have a couple more um, um, interesting things to, to stay and interact with. All right, so thanks everyone for tuning in. Everyone take care. May the force be with you.